Hi guys, my name is Steven, and welcome to video number 18 in my new series called Introduction to Code Igniter. What I'll be showing you guys in this video is uh, we'll be taking the form that we built last video, and we will uh, be running it through the form validation library. Um, I'll show you guys the ins and outs, a couple of the different functions, um, and the tools in the form validation library. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Last video, we made this beautiful form this uh, pretty awesome form and it submits to the send email function in our site controller take a look at that uh, let's clean some of this up let's go we'll need uh, the site controller and the contact view and that's about it <clears throat> yes okay so first thing we want to do is we actually want to load the form validation library. So what we'll do is in the contact uh, controller, we will, no, we have that, uh, that send email function, so we can actually create that now. Function send underscore email, and then we'll load that library. This load library um, form validation form underscore validation okay um, the next thing we want to do is we actually want to take a look at some of these values so we can start validating them so the uh, the name and ID of the name of the full name uh, text field in our contact page right here is full name. So I'm just going to copy that. Whoa. Okay, there we go. Um, and we'll actually start some setting some rules. And I'll, this may seem a little bit uh, confusing at first, but we'll I'll finish it off and it'll make perfect sense, I promise. So this form validation set underscore rules is one of the functions of this library. Now this receives three parameters. The first is the actual name or ID that's submitted of the text field. The second is the uh, user readable uh, value, so full name. So it, in a, when we look ahead, this will be the what's actually outputting when it does a when you have an error, for example, let's say the full name field is empty, it'll say the full name uh, field must must not be empty or, or something like that. Uh, and then the third parameter is the there are all the conditions that need to be met. So in this case, we're just going to put required in here for now, and we'll save this. And uh, I guess. Now, we can just copy this line twice. This one was email address. And this one was message. And of course, for this, we want to change to email address. Two Ds. And this one, message. Perfect. OK. Now, um, if you're used to doing form validation, you'll notice like if these conditions are met, then what? You know, like um, of course this is going to lead to an if-then statement. So we'll go if, and this is also a new function that you'll learn. This form validation run is exactly equal to false. Then we'll do this. So if it failed, we're going to um, load this view again, this whole content, the whole contact view, all over again, and I'll show you uh, how we actually echo those validation errors. Um, how we do that is we actually go into the view after we load this view again, and uh, before we open the form, we'll echo. Uh, validation errors is another function 
of the form validation library. Um, basically, the way this works is if you load this, uh, this library in the controller and then eventually call the view, you can actually use all the functions of the library in the view itself, which is what we're doing here. So um, now if we go and re refresh this page, we'll check and see if we have any errors. No, we don't. Um, what if we try and submit the form now? We click send. We're actually getting, like, it does this all for us. Like, how awesome is that? The full name field is required. The email address field is required. The message field is, is required. Um, before we get too much further, though, why don't we complete that if then? Because now we're going to have an else statement saying, uh, so if it's false, then it'll run, then it'll do this, and it'll echo out all the, all the errors so that the user can then compensate for that. Um, but if it's successful, then I'm actually going to do another trick. Instead of calling another view, we're just going to pass in a value to that view um, called like message. And it'll be the email has successfully been sent. And then we'll load this view again and pass that variable. The, array into it and now if we because all these are just required we'll fill, fill, it, fill that up with uh, garbage data press send email address fields required that could have been because I named it wrong yeah it probably is we'll take a look at this um, yes it's just email so we can copy this go back into our yeah so the name for e email is not email address it's just email we'll paste that in there save it and then fill with garbage data again and look at that um, it actually is passing in that value but we're not echoing it out so it's passing in the data array but uh but yeah so if we go into content contact the the view can actually echo this out like here. So just um, echo, what did I call it? Message? Yeah, message. Um, should be good like that. And if we refresh this, email has successfully been sent. So that uh, when, when uh, everything is validated successfully and everything comes up positive, um, it's passing this message into the view. However, because now that we have, now that this view is expecting the variable of this message, we just need to uh, pass in the data array into every time we load the contact view, which is only here and here. Um, so what I'll do is basically take this whole thing and we'll just pass in, um, it'll just have nothing in it. So this is kind of a trick, but what it does is it prevents us from needing another page for saying that you're an entire another view that says the email has been sent or whatever. Instead, we're just passing in values. So it's, it's a much more efficient way to do it. So now, if we actually go to the contact page, we don't have any errors. Whereas if we weren't passing in this data array, oh, that's the wrong one, we would have an error. Saying that message has been un message is undefined, so we'll just undo that. Go back in there, save it. Good to go. Okay, um, and I believe yes, we also need to pass in the array when the validation fails. Okay, excellent. Next step is I'll show you guys some of some more of these conditions that need to be met. For the email, there's a valid underscore email. So what that'll do is it'll take the string that is sent from the contact form. So if we fill this up with garbage data again, press send. Even though they're all full, the email address has to be valid. So it would have to be at something dot com or dot something. Something at something dot something is all it is. So now if we send this, the email, the email has been sent. So we're validating su successfully again, and this valid email condition is uh, is right. Another one is alpha, and we'll put this on the full name field because um, 
they're not going to have numbers in their name. They better not, otherwise that's weird. Um, they're not going to. Basically, all this means is if it is a capital case or capital letter or a lowercase letter. And again, we can test this by going numbers underscores stuff. So this is actually going to give us a, a couple of these: the email address and the full name may only contain alphabetical characters which is cool. Um, so that's working. One more, uh, I guess another thing I want to show you about this is notice how every time I do it, these values become blank again. I'm going to show you how to uh, set these values so that they'll actually stay. Um, and we'll do that like this. Right now the value in our arrays that we're passing into this form input helper is uh, or the form helper. It's just set to blank. And that's a problem. What we can actually do is we, there's a function in the uh, form validation library called set value. And in this, we just say uh, which of these um, names we actually want it to be. So in this case, um, this is for the full name field. We just put set value full name. And so whatever we typed into, uh, into the input field of full name, that'll show up next time. So we'll try this. So you can actually see that what we typed in when we submitted the form is actually being repopulated in that field. So they don't have to type it every time they get an error. And we'll do the same thing for uh, for the other two fields as well. Of course, this one will be email. And this one will be message. And that's me copying and pasting. Hope it's not too fast. Um, give you a second to read that. And okay. Now, if we refresh this, go back, or we'll just go back to the contact page, try it again from start. Um, type, my name is Steven. My email address is Steven at um, phpacademy.org. And the message hello, Steven. Email has been sent. Okay, so now we have a fairly complex. Um, oh yeah, one more thing. Um, Cross-site scripting. The, this vi the title of this video is security. Cross-site scripting is a, a one of the biggest problems that I've had in m some of my online applications. Um, people can do cross use scripts fr from other websites on my site uh, through these input fields. Um, and this is actually really simple to prevent with CodeIgniter. What you do is you just attach another condition called XSS underscore clean. Um, and we'll actually do that to all of them. And uh, sorry I didn't explain. This little thing right here, that's the bar. It's like a, when you put a forward slash, you, it's like shift forward slash on a PC keyboard. I'm not actually sure what it is on a Mac. But uh, hopefully you know, I think it's called bar is all it's called. Um, and you just separate the conditions in this third parameter with those. Okay, um, and this XSS clean condition will actually prevent anyone from doing cross-site scripting in those input fields. Um, and it's actually just that simple. Um, I think that's actually it for the form validation library. Um, in the next video, you can obviously see that if the form validation runs, then it's echoing out a message of the email has been successfully sent, but we're not actually sending any emails, which is kind of funny. Um, in the next video, I'll be showing you guys the, e the email library, so we'll actually be working all in here. It'll be fun. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.